This is pretty something. I've never seen anything like this before. Oh yeah, I would totally get this one again. This is Palm Springs. With a population of just under 50,000, Palm Springs is one of the most well-known small cities in Southern California. Known for its family-friendly resorts and sightseeing activities, it is a big tourist spot in California. Have you been? Hey there, this is Steve from Rockstar Eater, and in this episode, I'm gonna be taking you on my epic 72-hour journey into the food scene of Palm Springs, California. In this full documentary, you'll see all the best places to eat at and all the best things to see and do when you visit this town in the desert. Isn't that what vacation is all about? So get ready for a fun ride because this is the biggest Palm Springs food and travel video you're gonna find anywhere on YouTube. And also if you're new to this channel, take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell because I post these food and travel videos weekly you don't want to miss out on. So go ahead, do that right now. And with that being said, let's go to Palm Springs. The first restaurant you should eat at is La Bonita's, which is Yelp's highest rated Mexican restaurant in Palm Springs. Mexican food is one of the popular choices of food in Palm Springs. So if you like Mexican food and you're looking for a pretty highly rated spot, then this is the restaurant you definitely need to consider. And once again, highest rated Mexican food on Yelp. So I am not making this up. You see they got a lot of great starters. I heard their guac is pretty good. And then their specials, which is pretty much all these tacos. Yeah, they're known for their cheese shell tacos. And look, they even have chimichanga down here. Isn't that pretty cool? I think I'm gonna try that because I don't know if I've ever had that before. And burrito bowl is also a bestseller here from what I heard. And then if you want your drinks, like your beer, margaritas, they got it. All right, so what do we got coming up first? The chimichanga. So this is the carne asada, which is pretty much beef. Correct. Man. And chimichanga is one of your best sellers here, right? Yeah, popular. Very popular. So I guess the reason why they call it a chimichanga is that it's deep fried, right? Right. Okay, like a fried burrito. Correct. This is shredded cheese mixed with hot Cheetos that are ground up. Whoa, no way. And this is gonna be a hot Cheeto cheese shell. So you're saying that this cheese is supposed to become like a crispy, right? Right, you'll see. Oh yeah, I see it. So that's the cheese uh, yeah. taco? Hot Cheeto. Hot Cheeto, that's the shell. Yeah, you'll see it's still gooey cheese in the middle. Okay. And it's not made with flour or corn tortilla, right? No, no tortilla. Wow, that's innovative. Oh, I think that's it. It's done, yeah, it's a fried burrito. So I guess we got a carne asada and we got some with chicken. chicken. Chicken, okay. Okay, gotta have your avocado too. Hot Cheeto fairy dust. Okay, that's what you call it, fairy dust. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so based on what I'm seeing, it looks like a lot of these dishes have that authentic Mexican look to it, but then it has like its own unique twist. So it's very creative and it looks very tasty too. So I pretty much got all of their most popular best-selling items here, including the chimichanga. Oh yes, this is a pretty much a burrito, a fried burrito. And it's stuffed with pinto beans, cheese, and topped with pico de gallo, sour cream, and avocado. This is the burrito bowl, so it's a burrito without the tortilla. Pinto beans, cheese, rice, lettuce, pico de gallo, avocado. You have your choice of chicken, beef, or shrimp, and I got mine with grilled chicken today. This one is their fresh guacamole and chips. I like how the guacamole comes in this bowl-like shell. That's pretty cool. Oh yeah, look at all of these tacos I got here. Uh-huh, so this is their popular double shell taco to the right, which has a hard and soft shell. And you can have your choice of beef or chicken. I decided to get mine with chicken. And the center one is the quesadilla taco, which I got with the beef. And to the left, that one is a bonita taco, which is kind of like your average street taco from what I heard. 
Wow, I'm pretty excited about this one. Look at the one to the right. That's the cheese shell tacos. No tortillas for this taco. This is their signature taco. So that shell is not made of tortilla. It's purely cheese. But then look at the one to the left. That is the, uh, let's see, Hot Cheetos. Yeah, I can tell because there are all those Hot Cheetos on top. And this one is their grilled Mahi Mahis. Yes, they have the fish that is freshly grilled, topped with a mango salsa, very tropical. And it does come with beans and rice, so it is a complete meal. It tastes so fresh and so crunchy. It's made perfectly, like the perfect creaminess and not too salty, not too limey either. It's just about right. And along with your chips, you do get three kinds of salsa. The one all the way to the top, I believe is the mild one. And then it goes to medium, the green color, and this one, the habanero. It's supposed to be pretty hot, so just letting you know. It's not too bad. I think it slowly creeps in, but that I could definitely handle. I don't know if this burrito bowl is something that you would actually find in Mexico. Maybe it's more of a California thing, but I don't eat burrito bowls that often, but I've heard a lot of great things about this one. Wow, it's good flavor. That chicken is so juicy and so moist. So you got your proteins, you got your veggies, you got your beans in here. Oh, good stuff. I think this is the first ever time in my life I had a double shell taco. You see it? Have you ever seen anything like that before? Got cold mud. This is cool. It tastes good. I like the contrast of flavor between the softness and the crispiness. Oh yeah, you should definitely get this here. I'm getting this here next time when I come back. These fish tacos look so fresh and they grilled the Mai Mai. So yeah, that's a pretty big deal. <laughs> it's always like falling out. So yeah, you got the fish in there. You got the fruity sweetness of the mango in there. It's a very refreshing taco, like a very tropical tasting taco. So if you guys are into that, you should definitely get this. I don't think you're supposed to pick this whole thing up and eat it, even though you could, you see? Look at that, isn't it crazy big? They give you this. So you're supposed to cut into it and eat it. Oh, it's enjoyable. I think this is my kind of burrito because I've said many times in the past that I've really liked deep fried foods. So it almost tastes like a really big taquito in some ways, but just filled with a lot more stuff. I suppose if you really wanted to, you could just try to take a big bite out of this one. I think that's a more fun way to eat it. This hot Cheetos taco, the shell is made purely of grilled cheese. So there's no flour or corn tortilla on this one. Okay, I could already tell this is my favorite one here. And this one I got with the carne asada, which is really nice. Everybody comes to get this hot Cheetos taco and it is amazing. I cannot tell you what, what a great replacement this cheese shell is. It's like, I don't even miss the flour corn tortilla anymore. It's like, just give me a crispy cheese shell with all my tacos and I'm going to be good to go. Oh man. So if you don't like the hot Cheetos, you could get the regular cheese shell taco, which I think should be pretty good too from what it looks like. Wow, this one's good too. I still prefer the hot Cheeto taco, but this one would be like my second one. I've never seen anything like this in LA and it almost makes me want to drive all the way to Palm Springs just to eat this one. Yikes. This is their house special jalapeno jam. They house make it here. I've never seen this in a Mexican restaurant before. Truly amazing. It's sweet, it actually does taste like a jam. You know, like a fruity jam. Okay, I didn't expect that. I thought it was just gonna be like a firebomb in your mouth, but it's actually pretty pleasant. Okay, talk about innovative food. 
working my way back to try some of this beef tacos, carne asada. I feel in some ways that this is a step backwards because after having the hot Cheetos taco, it's like everything else is not as climactic. I mean, but still, if you're more of a traditionalist, it's really solid beef tacos. I mean, this would be good for any occasion, truly. It's not quite like the Mexican food in LA, but it definitely has its own personality. Like I said, the tacos, like the cheese tacos, hot Cheetos taco, my favorite thing here, total knockout. I would totally come back just for that. I mean, even the chimichanga is like so, wow. I mean, I really like that. I would definitely get that again because I just love like fried stuff, like the fried burrito. So yeah, when you come to this restaurant and you don't know what to get, just get, get the stuff that I got because these are some of the most popular items that you can find on the menu. They're best sellers and I don't think you can go wrong with it because everybody pretty much gets it here, uh-huh. My day two starts off with a visit to the Indian Canyons, which is the top attraction if you are into hiking. This area has about eight different trails to hike on. So if you are into hiking and into nature, then this should be your number one choice. But try not to come in the summertime because some of you might know Palm Springs is very hot in the summer. And for your safety, be sure to follow these requirements. Get plenty of water, dress appropriately. One of the big attractions you're supposed to see in Indian Canyon is the Andreas Canyon Pride Rock. And I think that's it. It looks just like in the brochure. Yeah, this is called Pride Rock. And then in the distance, you get a great view of Palm Springs. Wow, this is quite a sight. If you come during the summertime, I think it's best that you come earlier in the day, in morning, maybe like 9, 10 o'clock, the latest, because it will get very hot out here. But any other season, I think it should be okay. And like I said, there's a lot of these palm trees everywhere. So in many ways it's good because it will provide you with some shade, especially during this summer heat. You see, what did I tell you? It truly is an oasis here. You got a lot of this running water. Wow, this water feels so cool. It's like very refreshing. And the fun thing about this trail is that you're gonna encounter a lot of lizards, a lot of red ants, maybe some snakes. It says it on the sign, so you just have to use a little caution when you're walking this path, but I think for the most part, it's pretty safe. On I go. Nice little bridge. Well, I definitely have not been on hiking trails like this back in Los Angeles County. Look at all those palm trees behind me. All the rocks. Whew. Yeah, you're definitely gonna build up a sweat here. Now I can see why this is one of the go-to spots in Palm Springs. Uh, definitely within the top five of a lot of people's lists. I see it, that's the parking lot. That's where I first started. Yes, light at the end of the tunnel. That one mile went by pretty quickly, but you can go on seven other trails if you want to, but not me, I'm done for today. Ooh, it's getting kind of hot now. It seems like no matter where you drive to your next destination in Palm Springs, you're always gonna get a scenic view. Uh, it's a lot of desert. But hey, you know, it's still pretty fun to look at. You guys like desert? And if you are planning to get lunch afterwards, head over to Grand Central Restaurant, which is one of the best breakfast and brunch spots in Palm Springs. Everything is so high quality here. So if you're looking for food that's made with a lot of thought and with a lot of love, then Grand Central is a restaurant that you definitely need to check out. This is original stamped floor that we found under carpeting. It was pretty sad, so we're so happy. The clock is original, as are all of the, is the brickwork. Aaron Hansen did this. He's a muralist in the Coachella Valley. Wow. And people can't identify some of the people. Howard Hughes used to shop here when it was a department store. And of course, we all know who this is. I don't sew, I don't knit. I full books. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, these are real books? These are real books. So you have your own gallery here. Yes, and we feature local artists 
and it's an event space. So a lot of times on weekends we get overflow, and then we've had weddings and we have exciting events that people use it for. You can do a lot of things at Grand Central. And they have a lot of good things for brunch. I heard their popular things include the waffles, uh, the lox I heard is pretty good, chilaquiles, and it looks like it's pretty reasonably priced, not too terribly expensive. And they also got some sandwiches, which includes the burger, which I heard is super good here. And if you want, you can get salads. So yeah, I think I'm gonna get a little bit of everything today. And what's pretty cool is that all the produce that they use here comes in fresh every day. So you're gonna be getting some of the freshest breakfast brunch food that you can find in Palm Springs. I mean, you really can't beat that. That's so exciting. Based on what I'm seeing, they have breakfast items of all kinds. So it's not your typical scrambled eggs and pancakes, uh, bacon. They got a lot of very nice California style breakfast, brunch food. I'm so excited to eat. Haven't had a really good brunch meal in a long time. Here we go with the brunch food at Grand Central Palm Springs, beginning with the palm sugar waffles. Look how beautiful this thing looks. This one is a big favorite. This is the chilaquiles, which has the tomatillo sauce, very traditional choice. The cheese, red onions, sour cream, cilantro, and a sunny side up egg. So it's not scrambled in, it's actually sunny side up on top. And if you're into salad, I heard this is the one you gotta get, the goat cheese salad, which has pistachio honey labneh, mixed greens, panko crusted goat cheese, figs, yellow and red beets, as well as orange and grapefruit, mint vinaigrette. So this is the quinoa skillet. Never had skillet like this before. Red quinoa, sauteed spinach, tomatoes, wild mushrooms, cilantro tahini sauce. GC Burger, which is Grand Central Burger. So this is eight ounce ground Australian grass-fed Wagyu. Okay, spicy aioli, arugula, tomato, onion, brioche bun, along with some chips. So order of priority. I think I'm gonna try the chilaquiles first because this, you don't want the, the chips to get way too soggy. I mean, it are kind of already has, but still, I think there's some crispiness in it. Mm-hmm. So there's some softness, there's a little bit of crispiness in it as well, but I think it's so perfect when you eat it with the eggs, like the eggs and the sour cream together. Now this is not a Mexican restaurant, but they do make this dish very good. It's definitely worth ordering here if you like chilaquiles. I mean, I don't know if I would say it's like 100% authentic like the way they make it in Mexico but taste wise it's pretty on point it's definitely a very good item I can see why this is so popular at this restaurant my very beautiful waffles that I am so hesitant to break up but inevitably all beautiful foods need to come to an end because it all has to go into my stomach it's so thick and the, there's so much fruits here too. So this is one of the fruitiest waffles I think I've had. It also has a dosa de leche, that flavor, which I think it works good with any kind of waffles or cakes. I think after this, you could definitely get full because waffles are pretty filling. So this goat cheese salad, it's not just about the veggies. It has so much colorful fruits on there. When you bite into the salad, it really brightens up your whole day. That's how powerful the effect is. Veggies inside, and then you have the sweetness of the fruits, the sweetness of the beets, both the golden as well as the red one. Seriously, one of the brightest dishes I've had in a long time. But check this out, this is pretty interesting. It looks like some sort of a shrimp or a crab cake, but apparently, it's like a goat cheesecake. Wow, that was pretty unique. Yeah, like cheese inside and outside is, uh, maybe it's panko crusted, I think. 
Oh, this is really a good dish. One of the best salads I've had. Really, I would totally get this again. It's like all my favorite veggies are in here. The quinoa, tomatoes, spinach. Oh, that's such a good, good stir fry. I don't usually eat quinoa that often, but when I do, I enjoy it a lot. Yeah, that's cilantro tahini sauce. It's really fire. I don't mean that it's spicy, but I just mean that it's really good. So if you guys are into veggies, especially quinoa, here's another thing that you should get. Oh man, I am enjoying this restaurant so much. This is like such a good restaurant, let me tell you. I think it's been cooked to about medium or medium rare, something like that. But I think that's really how you want your burger at this restaurant. That burger is pretty killer. I mean, the patty is so thick and they use grass-fed meat. And you can taste it. This is not just your typical fast food burger quality. This is really a juicy, a very high quality patty that I'm eating. Cheese is also pretty good. And I'm not, I'm not even a cheese fan too. And uh, I mean, I but I like it on this burger, this cheddar cheese. Even though this isn't a burger restaurant, but even they go to great lengths to make sure that this burger is good using the grass-fed beef. And I noticed they have these house-made potato chips too. Haven't had these kind of chips in a while. You can tell, it's fresh. And here's my last dish. This is called the lox. Smoked salmon, looks apparent in the left side, as well as some red onions, pickled red onions, uh, caper berries, you got some eggs, tomatoes, cream cheese, cucumber, and then that bagel right over there. Let's see, I wanna try this smoked salmon by itself first. Mm, good tasting smoked salmon. Not too salty either, it's very soft. Okay, that's pretty good. You can eat it by itself or you can put it as toppings on top of your bagel. It's been a long time since I've had a bagel and smoked salmon. So together like this, probably the first time ever. So these things are like caper berries. I don't think I've seen capers like this before. Almost tastes like a pickle. When you taste the food here, it's pretty apparent. This is definitely one of the go-to spots in Palm Springs. Later that afternoon, I went for an early dinner to Marlin Bar, which is a Tommy Bahama restaurant on Palm Canyon Drive. A very popular restaurant for drinks, hangout, and awesome food. This is a spot you simply cannot miss out on if you are looking for some of the most iconic restaurants in Palm Springs. They call this the Marlin Bar. So I guess it's a little bit of a different concept than the one that's in Palm Desert because the menu is just a little bit lighter, but you're gonna see a lot of the same foods as well. Got a pretty nice selection here. It's almost like a cafe in some ways. Everything from draft beer to shakes, white, red wine, and they have desserts it looks like, pretty nice, as well as happy hour. Okay, three to six weekdays. See the snacks, the world famous coconut shrimp is popular. And then they got tacos, as well as these handheld sliders, it looks like, sandwich. Or if you want salads and bowls, they got it here as well, uh-huh. So here are some of the popular items that you can get at the Marlin Bar. This is their Black and Mahi Mahi Tacos, which is a bestseller here. You should get this if you want tacos. So it's tomato relish, chipotle aioli, island slaw, and lime sour cream. And this one, everybody knows, the world famous coconut shrimp. It has a papaya mango chutney in the bottom as a spread. Okay, I heard people from even Nashville commented how good this one is. This is their Nashville hot chicken sliders. We got the Hawaiian sweet roll, as well as the Cajun dry rub on the chicken, island slaw, garlic aioli, sriracha, house-made dill pickles. That coconut shrimp looks like fire. Look at that shrimp. Oh yeah, I love fried shrimp.
Oh, so good. I like it because you taste the coconut flavor, the shaved coconut, it's sweet. It's like a fruity, jammy kind of taste that I think is perfect with this. Oh yeah, now I see why it's so popular. Famous Mai Mai tacos. This is what everybody gets here if they order tacos. That chipotle aioli is incredible. I love chipotle flavor. I would say based on what I'm tasting right now, the Marlin Bar is a perfect spot to go to if you want to eat food that's not too heavy, like a full-on entree. But if you want to get something lighter, of course you can always order more to fill up, but I feel that this is almost like tapas portion. I am so excited to try these Nashville hot chicken sliders because I really like fried chicken especially if it's done Nashville style. That is so good. Wow, it's so crispy. And not too spicy too, which is a good thing. I feel this is like eating a small version of a Nashville hot chicken sando. Maybe I'm just a fried chicken fan, but this is so far my favorite item here at the Marlin Bar. So yeah, you should definitely get it. And of course you cannot leave here without trying their famous key lime pie, graham cracker crust and lime zest. Oh yeah. Wow. Oh wait, this is something you definitely need to get here. That is so creamy. It's almost like eating a very creamy cheesecake or a custard. I love the liminess. It's like you can really taste it. I mean, it's not overpowering, but it's just perfect. Wow. Day three begins with what many people say is the top attraction in Palm Springs, the aerial tramway. It goes up 8,000 feet to the mountains where you can get a great aerial view of the Coachella Valley. Unless you are afraid of heights, then this is the thing I would most recommend you do in Palm Springs. It's about $30 or $29.95 for adults and they do have like summer prices and annual passes. So definitely check on the website just to uh, make sure everything is up to date. It's kind of funny, I feel like I'm getting on a ride in Disneyland. There's seriously like a line of people getting into this tram. All right, well, here we go into the tram. I don't know if you guys can see it, that, but that's the starting point down there where I was at just about a minute ago. The two cars are 34 feet apart. And this aerial tramway also rotates. Oh, that's pretty cool. So you're gonna get like a 360 view going up this journey. So I think this is something that's not for those who have a fear of heights. I mean, you're really gonna go up high and this tram does kind of rock a little bit. So a little bit intimidating, but very thrilling. Oh boy. I think it's safe pretty much for the most part. Does this discourage any of you guys from wanting to come to this thing? So this is what you come to see, this whole view of Palm Springs. We're about 8,500 feet up. And one of the things that I noticed is that it's very breezy up here. I think it's about 20 to 25 degrees cooler when you come up into this mountain. Now for summertime, that's actually a very good thing because it's burning hot down there. It's like about 105 degrees. But if you come up here during the winter time, you definitely want to bring a jacket, dress pretty warmly, because I think it get very chilly up here. There's kind of a path that goes a little bit up. And once again, more aerial view. So it looks like on this side, you're gonna pretty much see the trees, like all the pine trees and it stretches for, wow, I don't know how far, but there's about 14,000 acres of trees out here. So here is if you wanna see more trees, but then you go to that side if you wanna see really frightening height, like looking 8,000 feet below. If you are not into heights, then this might not be the thing for you because I can understand how some people could get kind of nauseous looking at all this. I don't think I've done anything like this since I was at the Strat Hotel in Las Vegas. I mean, that was pretty high, but this, wow. And if you guys are hungry, there is a restaurant, believe it or not, all the way up here. It's called Peaks Restaurant. You'll pretty much enter into it when you exit the tramway 
and this is one of the highest restaurants that you're gonna find uh, in all of California, maybe even the world. Before you get to Peak's restaurant, there is this other restaurant eatery called Pines Cafe, which serves like a cafeteria style, buffet style food. It's definitely more casual, so not as expensive as Peak's restaurant, but I'm not gonna be eating here today. I'm gonna go a little fancier. I'm here for lunch times. They do open for dinner time as well, which is a different menu. And then the entrees, they have everything from the steaks to even fish and burgers, which I heard are best sellers. And based on what I'm seeing that's cooking back here in the kitchen, it looks like this is pretty much American food, California style. They're making everything from the appetizers to burgers, all for lunch. Fried onions and barbecue pulled pork on top of the mac and cheese. I've never seen that before and barbecue sauce. Wow, doesn't get any better, huh? Woo, we got some bacon and blue cheese on top of the patty. Yep. All right, that's the fish. That's the burger. There it is. I know that this is a tourist spot, but this is so exciting, eating at a restaurant that's really high up in the mountains. I mean, where else are you gonna find a restaurant like this? Drop that comment, let me know, because I'm very curious. So starting off with some of their hot appetizers, beginning with this one. This is the Mediterranean bruschetta. It has fresh basil, tomatoes, garlic oil, olive oil, balsamic glaze, and look at that focaccia bread, yikes. And that one is the duck confit flatbread, which I heard is really one of the best things here. We got apricot, mushrooms, caramelized shallots, balsamic glaze, Wow, this looks pretty good too. This is charred shrimp. So we got pineapple chili glaze served over a bed of Napa cabbage. Well, that's a very nice tasting sweet glaze. So it's kind of like a sweet chili sauce, an equivalent, but it has that pineapple flavor. So it's a little bit fruity. I think this is the first time in a while that I've actually had this kind of a sweet glaze over shrimp. So if you guys like that, then this is the one you definitely need to get. I think this is the first time I've had duck on top of a flatbread, so this is pretty fun. I really like that sweet glaze, that balsamic glaze over it. It works good on salad, and it works good on bread too. Mushrooms, huge fan of, so this is like my type of flatbread. And not to mention those caramelized onions. It's very tasty and so good for sharing too. Yeah, this is definitely something you should get here. Looks extremely refreshing. It's been a long time since I've had a bruschetta. So I'm so excited to eat this. Oh, so refreshing. Almost like something out of an Italian restaurant. I would say that this food is, uh, it's not like casual, casual. It's a little bit more towards fine dining. I mean, not super fine dining, but I can say it's nice. So this is definitely gonna be a restaurant occasion. So just to let you know, this is not one of those restaurants where you just park and walk on over. You have to take a tramway to get all the way up here. So you cannot walk up here. Yeah, so you're gonna have to take the tramway all the way up here and then you're gonna find the restaurant. So it just shows how very exclusive it is. So here is round number two, which is pretty much now my entrees. Uh, check this out. We got some, the smoked Gouda pulled pork mac and cheese. Have you guys ever seen pulled pork mac and cheese before? So we got the pasta, the Gouda, aged cheddar, the barbecue smoked pulled pork, crispy onions with that barbecue sauce glaze. And if you guys like burgers, they got you covered with bacon blue cheese burger. Wow, this is half pound of the house blended beef, blue cheese crumbles, avocado spread. You got the smoked bacon, applewood, leaf lettuce, tomato, and red onions. And these are called sidewinder fries because of the way that they're shaped. Isn't that so cool? And this one is called the lemon ruffy. This is their special fish dish. Orange ruffy filet served with farro salad heirloom tomatoes, fennel, and fresh lemon. And this mac and cheese, definitely one of the most unique things I've seen so far on this trip. Oh, that's very interesting. 
Okay, if they didn't put any of that pulled pork on top of it, I would say that this is, would be kind of like a boring mac and cheese, to put it very bluntly. But that barbecue pork on it, I feel like now I'm eating um, something out of a barbecue restaurant where you mix the pulled pork with a side of mac and cheese, like all together in one bowl. That's exactly how it tastes like. I think the crispiness of those onions really adds a good balance to the softness of the mac and cheese because the mac and cheese is like very soft, very picture worthy fish. Man, this is so beautiful. It's like, you don't want to break this thing up. That's how nice it looks. That is such a clean tasting fish. It has the Cajun seasoning over it, but it's not like overpowering. I still can taste the pleasant taste of the fish. And it's slightly crispy too, because it's been grilled. This is really a good way to make fish. Very refreshing. This whole thing is a complete meal right here, and I'm very much enjoying it. If you guys are into fish, I heard this is the one you gotta get here. So yeah, I just narrowed it down for you for seafood. These are definitely the most interesting fries that I've seen. Oh, very tasty. It's so soft inside, but then outside is very crispy. I like it. Okay, so definitely they put some good fries in here. When they offer burgers on the menu, they're not playing around. Look how big this thing is. This is a really big burger. I think you're gonna get full off of this one. Wow, it's so juicy. Half pound, cooked to about medium, very juicy. This is like a very good all-American burger. Blue cheese just totally elevates the flavor. A lot of customers here get this burger, especially for lunchtime. If you don't know what else to get, if you like burgers, definitely get it. It's pretty solid. And I am ending it off in style with their apple brown butter tart. So in the center, that's the brown butter apple tart with vanilla ice cream on top, caramel drizzle, and they did something a little special for me, it looks like, giving me these other selections that are usually part of uh, banquet meals, from what I heard. Oh, very enjoyable. I definitely taste those apples in there. Mm. It's like when you eat it, it really warms your soul. It's like a very feel-good dessert. What a perfect way to end off. As you guys can tell, I had many dishes today, and you're probably wondering, what was my favorite one? Well, definitely for the appetizer, the flatbread, duck confit, definitely that's the one to get. I really enjoyed that a lot. And for the entree, even though that burger was pretty good, you know, I gotta say, I really like that fish, the lemon roughy. It tastes so clean. It even tastes healthy when you eat it. I would totally get that one again. But yeah, definitely come on over here, try the food. I mean, it's not like Michelin Guide or Michelin Star level, but still for a tourist hotspot, it's definitely worth visiting if you're up here. Of course, with every travel destination, you're gonna have your gift stores and they have t-shirts here and they have a lot of these other very interesting novelty items. Wow, it's like you kind of want to buy a little bit of everything, right? And it looks like there's even more. You can go down to the first floor and then you also have your State Park Visitor Center. Now this is always so fun to come to, right? That thing looks so real, isn't that crazy? So right behind the visitor center, you're gonna see this hiking trail that goes all the way down, and I believe it goes for about a mile, which is not that bad. It looks like it's a very scenic trail because you have so many pine trees, nice mountain view. I mean, this is really the definition of California right here. Oh, man. So that's pretty much the tour up here on the mountains. So you see, there's quite a lot to do up here, right? And now I'm going to take this very intimidating flight all the way back down there and we're going to move to our next spot. So west of Palm Canyon Drive is the Art Museum, which is one of the most popular museums that you can visit in Palm Springs. This is definitely the one you have to visit, especially if you are in the downtown Palm Springs area. So if you are into art and you love museums, they got you here. 
So in case you guys are wondering, adult is $16 and then everything else is in the bottom. So looks like it's a very reasonably priced museum. For places like this, it's always a good idea to have a map because there are three stories to this whole facility. Me personally, I think I'm more into history artifacts type of museums. I don't go to art museums that often, but um, hey, if it's a big attraction, I mean, why not check it? I'm very open-minded. Hey, I recognize some of this artwork, Bart Simpson. Of course, they'll tell you some of the local artists who are responsible for drawing, painting this stuff. This museum is so silent. There's almost kind of like an eeriness to it. I feel like I'm the only one here. I know there's some people who can just sit in a bench and just stare at a painting for minutes, maybe even up to an hour, I don't know. I am not one of those people. I like to look at it maybe for just 30 seconds the most, and then I gotta move on because there's a lot of things to see around here. And I guess there's even more when you go upstairs. Wow, this is actually a very nice museum. In this section looks like we have more statues and carvings, not just wall painting. You see, look at that view. Pretty nice, huh? Is that a spider up there? I think so. Somebody better swat that thing down. There's more. You can go up to a third floor. So this is about a three floor museum and I think there's a basement level too. Just kind of give you an idea of how high I am. So I'm on the third floor and that over there is the second floor and that is the first floor. So based on what I'm seeing, it looks like it's for the most part contemporary modern art. So I guess in some ways it's equivalent to like Broad Museum in downtown Los Angeles, kind of like that. And it looks like they have outdoor sculpture gardens too. So if you guys like to walk in the cool of the breeze, which is not existent right now because it's summertime, this is like so perfect. Keep in mind, this is not the only museum to visit in Palm Springs, but if you happen to be in the downtown area, then this is definitely the go-to one. So come here and enjoy the art. And as an added bonus, what you can also do here in Palm Springs is to walk Palm Canyon Drive. This is the major street that runs through downtown Palm Springs. It's about a mile long, and this is kind of like the Sunset Boulevard of Palm Springs, where you're gonna see all the shops and all the restaurants and all that stuff. So yes, if you want a scenic route where you can see more of like the urban part of Palm Springs, then this is it. Well, that's pretty much it with my 72 hour journey into Palm Springs. Which of these restaurants or tourist attractions have you been to? Drop it in that comment section because I would love to hear your stories and your suggestions. Well, thank you so much for watching this episode. I'll see you all in the next food adventure.